Hello, and welcome back to Arcurus Plays Final Fantasy VII Remake. Hopefully this is the end of the sewers chapter. And we are going to move into what I think is the worst chapter Look, in the entire the game. I wonder. There must be some way we can lower the water level. I'm hoping we can get all this in one episode. Okay. Guys, check it out. Seventh Heaven's water tank has something similar. I'm betting we can use this to control the sewage level. Hey, Cloud. You want to give it a try? This ought to drain the water. Right? No luck? Must be busted. A red light indicates a blockage, apparently. We can use the hand pump to clear the blockage. Sounds about right. I remember having to do this at the bar before. All right. I'll... Aerith, you mind giving me a hand? Cloud, you stay put. Keep an eye out for more red lights. Wait, I'm not sure... Trust me, this is the best way to handle it. We'll be back soon. Then Aerith need, Aerith need girl time. So maybe this is a little different from the one at the bar. More industrial? Okay. Have Aerith open the valve. Use left stick to open the valve. The needle will start to swing from right to left. When the needle is moving, repeatedly hit A to expand the target range. As the indicator hand swings back to the right, use the left use the left stick to close the valve within the target range. Yeah, I remember doing this on my very first time uh, playing this, and I had no idea what it was I was trying to accomplish here. At the very least, um, like that target area is going to grow and grow basically every time you fail, so eventually you can get through. Um, I'm kind of going to take this time to, you know, you know, pay attention to the dial here. So like, the dial itself is pretty good, but the more you go towards the center, you see that, uh, you know, it's coppery goldish and just how muddy it looks. And also the rust looks pretty bad. So it's like if you're going to take something like this and make it so... Um, and put it up in front of us, you know, probably they should have uh, put some more effort into it at least. Because the character models, like, you know, that dial face looks ugly compared to the character models. Here goes. Whoops. Try to stay in sync. Okay, raise the lever. Fix pressure. Keep calm. See what I wasn't sure about was that I was supposed to actually lower the lever when the arrow's within the, the red there. Oh, that was too early. Could have gone better. But as you can see, that target area gets bigger and bigger the more we fail. There we go. We have to do this three times. Spectacular. Okay. <sighs> Try to stay in sync. <laughs> Come 
Come on, that has to count. That went well. <laughs> that one was fast. Here goes. I don't even think you're supposed to get this on like all first time goes. getting worried. Why are the reflections on the water like so bad right here? Nicely done. We make a great team. Go team! You sure you want to fight? Ah, okay, so the magnified materials essentially are all material. Gotcha. Don't hold back. You got me. Get him! Cut! Can't keep eyes. to it. Secure the exit. Cloud. That was actually a really good transition there. Looks like they're hungry for more. We're not delicious. Not even a little bit. Get going. No. Okay. You too. But there's too many of them. Not for me. Team, but you have this club actually has a weapon there. Back off or die. I still feel like we could have taken that many.
Chapter 11. By far the most filler in the entire game. Okay. So here we are, giving a reminder of the stakes Understood. here. The avalanche mission's been approved. We ought to proceed as planned. <sighs> this is bullshit. What the hell are they thinking? Threats to public order are to be summarily put down. This is what we've always done. Summarily put down. <laughs> Guess it's a little late to grow a conscience. Just on patrol. Don't worry, we'll make it in time. So, there's such a thing called pacing. And this whole section kind of ruins the pacing that's been built up over time. I can finally order survival vest for Barrett, and we're going to pick one up. So, we have this dire threat hanging on over our heads that we built up since the end of Wall Market. Okay, so the pace has been building. So, you know, pace in a game or in a movie or in a story, you know, it has uh, up and down movements. And so, like, we start in Medias Res with the, uh, with the bombing of Mako Reactor Number One. We could get lost in here. This is the train graveyard. So right? we go to a high point, a and then we drop to a lower Sector point, seven which was just past that large maintenance facility you know, over there. I vote we stay in the light so we can see where we're going. Dark, dark everywhere. That it? You know, then it drops as we, you know, got to know Sector Seven a little bit. And then, you know, it peaked again when we went up to the Sector 7 plate. You know, they built up something triumphant at the end of that and built up and up it's deserted. into and the uh, Sector 5. People don't come around here often. It then dropped again. And not just because of the monsters, but uh, because for, of the stories. You know, what kind? The Sector 5 stuff with Everyone Aerith. Everyone seems to think that the train graveyard is haunted. Those who lose their way out there in the dark of night will never, ever find their way back home again. <gasps> Is that right? I mean, it's not like I think it's true or anything. But, you know, it's just... Then let's hurry. So, like, outside of, like, the actual missions themselves, there hasn't really been, like, a ticking clock insofar as the um, plot is concerned. And... Uh, what with, you know, finding out from Corneo that they're going to blow up the Sector 7 pillar, it seems like, you know, we should be building up to something again. Uh, so, like, we're going through the sewers, you know, Tifa talks about how worried she is, and then we get out of the sewers, you know, and we're reminded of the stakes. And then, throughout this whole point right here, our characters forget about the stakes, and it becomes a lot more lackadaisical... Uh, about puzzle solving and you know solving the little mystery that's going on here. This should have been like a comeback later. Is quick. Like the the subplot that we're gonna see here should have been like a comeback later and solving type thing. That's a win. So like right here, like the plot of the game basically just stops. And something that was two screens and just a little bit of... Just a, a tiny little bit of, uh, you know, navigational stuff. Which didn't really slow down the plot at all. It just helps set up that like, by the time Cloud gets back here it's night. But instead, they feel the need to do, like, this little, you know, this little spoopy segment in here with, like, 
a mystery and a subplot and that sort of thing. Let's go ahead and assess. Too bad. there be kids out here this late what and... so like right now Tifa's more afraid of the immediate than like the impending doom and that uncertainty so it kind of like ruins things a little bit all in the name of like what the uh, developers have been doing to like try to expand basically all of Midgar. So they basically pushed out a whole bunch of things that should have taken a lot less time, you know, so that they could have more care for the plot. And also I think like some of the spirit stuff here, uh, there's a big like fan theory that I think is kind of official that the world of Final Fantasy 7 and Final Fantasy 10 are the same. Uh, and I think that's official. I've been out of that whole thing for a while. So the way these spirits act, what they are, and that sort of thing uh, is very reminiscent of how fiends and unsent spirits work in Final Fantasy 10. Which, if that's all gibberish to you, I'm not going to explain it. Because maybe one day I'll actually play Final Fantasy X on the channel. But because it's an incredibly long JRPG and, you know, I've gone over like that. You know, when, uh, now that I'm kind of older, I have less and less time to, like, play super long games like that. But I would love to play, like... 100 hour RPGs. Um, I know my friend uh, Ghost LPs, uh, like, that's kind of the bread and butter of his channel. But even when he plays something, like, really long, like, he did a Let's Play of Fallout 3, I, I couldn't sit through it for the whole thing. <laughs> Even people who do those sorts of games really well, such as, Never uh... again. Actually, I can't remember the YouTuber's name. Maybe it'll come to me, but, uh... There's a YouTuber who does, uh... He's English, does Bethesda games. Um... And, like, he comes up with, like... Uh, backstories and motivations for like the character he plays in the Bethesda games and uh... oh there's a material back here and like that's a lot of what helps keep that like series fresh but even I can't uh, you know even I can't like keep my interest in that for that long Well, like, I would also love to play the original Final Fantasy VII, but I don't think that that's a game that uh, really caters really well towards Let's Playing, simply because, like, in this, you know, we can stop and listen to the, uh, to the characters, like, talk and that sort of thing, and then we can, you know, add our own interpretation on top of that, you know, that sort of thing, you know, and talk about it, and talk about theming and, and motifs and all that sort of thing. But in some of the older Final Fantasies, specifically Final Fantasy VII, VIII, and IX, and the, early one, the earlier ones too, like there's just a lot of dialogue to read. You okay? And you either have to kind of like pause a little bit on all the dialogue so people can read it. Still in one piece here too. Or you know, start doing stuff like Guys? voices towards it, but then a lot of your 
Seriously? voiceover is going towards just presenting the game for the audience. Well, that's inviting. All right, let's see what's inside. Well, what do you think? Hmm. I'm game. Huh? Uh, but it'll be fine. We've got a bodyguard, don't forget. Mine. <sighs> right? Ghosts aren't my thing. <sighs> You're just being modest. After you. Mind letting me go then? <laughs> it's the little things in the animations and that's kind of like what I think the uh you know like sets the animations of this game apart uh things like you know Cloud stand there he's got two pretty girls on his arms and they're like Ah, yes. You know, you... What was that? We are brave because you can be Look, brave and you need to be brave there. for us. You know, they're kind of playing up into, you know, some of how Cloud presents himself. But then you see Cloud's eyes starting around in there. You know, just to show, like, how uncomfortable he is. Hey, can we talk? Just for a bit? Apparently, ghosts are a real thing now. Get back. Okay. I guess I can kind of like talk about like Final Fantasy X and like the. Some of them are fan theory and stuff. So specifically of how things like work. So in Final Fantasy X, um, there's a thing called Pyreflies, and Pyreflies uh, basically represent the life force of um, a creature or person, uh, just like the life stream does here in Final Fantasy VII. It's a very similar, um, it's a very similar concept, but so there are summoners and part of the summoner's job uh is to perform something called the sending which sends the pyreflies back to what they call the far plane uh where their essence can recoalesce into new life somewhere else it's very similar to the way the life stream works again in final fantasy 7 and this is where some of those similarities really come into play now they're all like a lot of the monsters in the world uh, come from what are called the unsent. So if somebody dies under horrible circumstances, or if they have very powerful emotions, uh, they can continue to exist as an unsent. So those emotions can be bad, those emotions can be good, uh, but the unsent eventually resent the living because they can't live or move on anymore. It's kind of like the old like Casper thing. So like a ghost has unfinished business so the unsent have unfinished business but eventually they transform into monsters and attack the living and so like uh, this spirit in like its little you know ball of light form is really reminiscent of oh there it is that's really reminiscent of what a pyrefly looks like from Final Fantasy X and then they kind of function the same as the uh, live stream here in Final Fantasy VII if I I apologize if I haven't really explained how the live stream works, but the game will explain it later. Don't. That thing's dangerous. I know, but even so. Huh? 
What the? Okay? Yeah. Oh, thanks, Cloud. You saved us. Like, here we are. 20 minutes into this, uh... Gonna need to find another way through. Into this little side quest. Like, I could be... Coming through. Out of our way! Go on. For instance, like, on some of my first playthroughs of the original Final Fantasy VII, I could complete this section of the game in three total hours, which would total out to, like, three episodes, if I did hour-long episodes. It's And that's, like, on a completionist level. So now we can't go back. What now? Push it. will be stopping at the Sector 7 train and is bound for the train graveyard. The train will be stopping. We stand clear of the closing doors. <laughs> the reason why I define this as spoopy instead of spooky is that there there really aren't any scares here. Uh, most of the work is done by the atmosphere, but like the actual like ghosts or entities themselves aren't scary at all. They're just That's not funny, you know. Guess the crane's up there. Yep, you know, they're just goofy. I almost have a feeling that the developers were, are almost trying to make the same statement with this, uh, with this section of this game that, uh, the Half-Life 2 developers were making with, uh, with the Ravenholm section of, uh, Half-Life 2, which was, if we wanted to do scary, we could. It's not working. There's no power coming through. I wonder if this is another prank. Someone might be messing with the power supply to make us run around. Well, there's our answer. Kind of is a uh, an appropriate place for that. So there's the obvious way we need to go, then the non-obvious way. I'm gonna take the non-obvious way every time. I found you.
Gothic Bangle would be okay. It'll supernatural risk guards when you have the Okay. I gotcha. Strength plus ten. Okay, so we can give you another materia to train with. Ice isn't really the most useful of material in this game. Fire and lightning far more, because their enemy types are far more common. Do you think there's more in here? Mm. Looks like. Aha! Found you! Inadvertently, because it's the way they wanted us to go. It was apparently blocked from the inside. So, we went the way we were supposed to, quite inadvertently. Yeah, what's over this way? No turning back. Okay, we'll get up there. I think that makes we got five Google medals. That'll be enough for another, like, five weapon skill points for Barret. Okay. Let's make our way back. We have a bit of a boss fight to get to.
there's also, okay, here's something else that, you know, this kind of applies to the space ghosts, or time ghosts, or whatever, but it also applies to, like, some of the stuff that happens here. So, the director of the remake, uh, he's also the guy who's behind, by and large, the Kingdom Hearts series. And, whereas I really liked the first Kingdom Hearts game, the longer that series went on, the more convoluted and convoluted it got. To the point that once Kingdom Hearts 3 came out, I just didn't care about that series whatsoever. And that director has a couple of, like, storytelling flourishes that he likes to use. And whenever I see them, I am reminded of, Kingdom Heart of the Kingdom Hearts series. And it just makes me dislike them completely. I think Kingdom Hearts 1 is a really good game. I only got halfway through Kingdom Hearts 2. I didn't play any of the spin-offs because they were all on a ton of different consoles. Also, another character does a similar thing uh, from Final Fantasy 7 during Cerberus. And that's where, like, he pulls a character into, like, another dimension to use their despair against him. That sort of thing. That's a thing that'll kind of like happen here with this ghost thing in Aerith. As well as like Oh Tifa, I think. I don't have time for your shit. None of us do, Cloud. Okay, so let's go ahead and assess this Allow thing. Me. It is weak to fire, but for some reason I'm doing less damage to it. It'll drop a submersion material when we kill it. There's no rare drops. Switches between physical and ghostly forms. Neither, neither magic attacks against the physical form nor physical attacks against ghostly form have any effect on its stagger gauge. Alright, so. Using that ghostly form. That was a physical form. That's why I'm getting reduced, because the fu extra fire damage that this does. There's a stagger effect. Alright, so let's go. I can't infinity's end it. That's why. Clouds on it. Burn. Oh. 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 Oh.
my ascension. Gotta give it my all. Deal with that. I'll show you what I can do. I got this. <laughs> So let's star shower. There. Come on. Give him your all. Otherwise, fall in. Ah, Tifa, you're so awesome. So I can grab a Tifa up to her level three of that her uh, key power, and all then. You were waiting for someone. Star showering, then using you. all those special moves. It's a ton of damage. She is such a cannon. What are you talking about? Come on, let's get back to the crane. Just drop the hole. What if they're trapped here and can't leave? Just like we hoped. What a relief. We should be able to get through now. Let's find out. Drake's in the way. Like when I originally played this, I didn't pay too much attention to like learning the abilities and swapping the weapons and that sort of thing. So I feel like I was missing out on a lot of power earlier on. We're through. Great. Let's head outside. carries away have to live in the train graveyard forever and ever so you have to stay far far away from there all right then i will mm. oh you know betty yesterday she went with her daddy to to hmm? when is daddy coming back Actually, he might not make it home tonight. <sighs> so remember when I said that a lot of Barrett's conflict has a lot more to do with... Um, like, his conflict between, you know, being a we father can't to Marlene... Any more time here. As well as, you know, his dedication to the cause. What and finally, Tifa Nothing remembers what about. we're... Let's get going. Finally, she remembers the stakes.
just because we're through that building and we beat that one boss doesn't mean we're done yet. The game's not done wasting our time. And so they didn't really need like that little ghost to remind Tifa uh, to moving. show that scene with Maybe Marlene. Now we can get to the other side. They basically game. Focus. could have. Trust me, I'm focused. They basically could have included that scene in like any sort of flashback. <laughs> Let's do this. Block two? But we're so close, I can see it. Uh, hey, do you think these trains might still run? Could give it a try. Good call. Looks like it still works. I knew it! Everybody good? Yeah. Huh? Hmm. Uh, I think that's... Flight separation code is... Hmm. Got it. Yeah, yeah, of course I do. We just have to one thing or never. It's just that. And if we were reminded, yet again of what the stakes are, and yet the game basically, for the last, you know, 45 minutes, hasn't been treating the, uh, hasn't been treating this like the emergency the characters would probably treat this. So that's what we are. Tifa. They're really gonna drop the plate. They won't if Barrett and the others have anything to say about it. 
All we can do now is keep moving. Please, please let us be in time. Right up there, right to the plate. Look at that. Are good find those will basically heal our characters all the way up to the full. Keep your cool. No need to work. <laughs> Train, I need to move. So, yeah, in the original game, moving the trains, it was a thing Thanks. to get through. Let's go. But I really don't think it's something like. It was kind of filler in the original game. I don't know. I guess. In modern games, I think I'm kind of spoiled in that, like, there are so many games that provide such a focused, um, that provide such a focused experience that it kind of takes me out when I have to, like, deal with something that, like, tries to do a lot of things or be everything. It's like, uh, one of my go-tos is actually Doom 2016, and I think that it, it is in all ways a better game than Doom Eternal, but, you know, that's just my opinion. I'm not saying a Doom Eternal is a bad game. I see what the uh, devs in that game were trying to do. It's just that, like, I'm not the target audience for what they were doing there. But, like, Doom 2016 provides, like... There's basically, like, no fluff uh, in the game, with the exception of, like, some of the more forced story elements. But insofar as gameplay goes, there's not a ton of... There's not a ton of, like, side stuff to do. You know, the gameplay is, you know, 
it's first person shooting, the mechanics support the first person shooting, and the game's really not trying to be anything other than that. Almost there. Come on. Right. Whereas here, they try to add in like so many mini games and like little small gameplay features that I feel like focus is lost. And here's some of the kingdom heartsening happening. Because the they just the they just reminded us of all of the stakes for the Sector 7 ever. plate. And then they, you know, pull us away for this stuff again. You're just trying to help. Aren't you? trap you in the dark and despair. That's a very Kingdom Hearts thing to happen. Are you ready? Well, are ya? I'm ready now! Me too! Found you! <laughs> no way! We found you! Ah, uh, you got me. Hey, where's Aerith? I'm ready! I'm ready! I wonder if this is an actual memory of Aerith's, or if it's just like a manifestation of her loneliness as to who and what she is. But <laughs> yes, the darkness and the despair will take you. Aerith! Don't worry, your friends shall pull you out. We shall have a boss battle. Against a ghost robot. Hey, we found you. Conflict introduced, conflict resolved. Did. Immediately. a weapon for Aerith with steel. This might be the only way to get it. He's resistant to physical attack, weak to... Get him! Weak to ice. It's a good thing we 
we've got a Blizzara on our side. Call the knife. Your stagger. One more shot. I'll take care of this. Strike hard and fast. For a sub Shiva. Hope you're ready. Let's wheel. dance, asshole. And we miss most of the attacks because the enemy just keeps moving. It's like he keeps reminding us of the stakes, but then just keeps stopping us over and over again. That's why it's I hate that this ghost. section so much. Wow. Don't worry, Tifa. They're all just going to get sucked up by the live stream. 
so long. Or not by the live stream, by the Mako reactors. Then they're gonna get burned to power your computers and your cars. Don't worry about it. Now I think about it, actually, a more apt, um, a more apt, like, uh, meaning for the metaphor of the live stream would probably be fossil fuels, uh, considering, you know, that it comes from organic material that, you know, lived, you know, millions of years ago and was compressed by rock. Now that we're past there, we are going to check on Tifa's equipment. All right, so there's a uh, plenty for upgrading that uh, needs to happen, especially with Barrett. Anyways, we will do that next time. This seems to be a good enough place to end it today, so. Thanks for watching. This is Arcurus, signing off.